Out of respect for you and your show, <laughs> I've brought some facts. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> if you'd like, oh, they're oh, actually... You just, you just get the fuck <laughs> out of here. I this thought, is not the place. No, I thought you like no, facts. No, no, no I, we do. No, we like mate, facts. I love facts. I wouldn't have mentioned it. I'm English, and you know that politeness is our fundamental religion. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they do pertain to this issue, so may I say something? Please, them? please. If they please inconvenience you, you I I I'll stop saying them. The pandemic created at least 40 new far big pharma billionaires. Pharmaceutical corporations like Moderna and Pfizer made $1,000 of profit every second from the COVID-19 <laughs> vaccine. More than well. two-thirds of Congress received campaign funding from pharmaceutical companies in the 2020 election. Pfizer chairman Albert Baller told Time magazine in July 2020 that his company was developing a COVID vaccine for the good of humanity, not for money. And of course, Pfizer made a hundred billion dollars okay. in profit right. in 2022. Right. And may I just mention that finally, and these are, this is also a fact, that you, the American public, funded the development of that. The German fund, public funded the BioNTech vaccine. When it came to the profits, they took the profits. When it came to the funding, you paid for the funding. All I'm querying is this. Yes. Is if you have right. an economic system in which pharmaceutical companies benefit hugely from medical emergencies, where a military industrial okay. complex <laughs> benefits from war, where an energy companies benefit from energy crises, you are going to These generate right. states of perpetual crisis yes. where the interests of ordinary and, people and, well, yes. and, separate from the interests of the elite. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Syriana Analysis. I'm your host, Kirk Almasian. I apologize if the quality of this video is not in your likening. I'm trying my best to bring you quality videos and quality content within or in whatever I have here with technology, webcams. I have to upgrade my camera. There were some software problems in the past few days. As you may uh, notice, there were some black glitches in the video this was a software problem i use a podcasting software to record videos and do interviews and at the same time i also use my my smartphone as a webcam and for that you need a separate software for your mobile to be used as a webcam and all these softwares together sometimes do technical problems so i'm using this old one now and i think it is good enough to post this video and i'm gonna speak again about russell brand in the past video i spoke a little bit about russell brand's case and the accusations serious accusations against him that are very disturbing i myself read the article the investigation and i was completely disturbed by the details that are mentioned in the article but are these details accurate i don't know because there are so many things that aren't mentioned there and above all the hundreds of people that they interviewed they do not mention anything positive from these interviews except they cherry pick the negative things that are mentioned about russell brand so this raises a little bit questions right but why i'm speaking about russell brand this is a geopolitical channel this is a channel we speak about syrian war we speak about the ukraine war we speak about karabakh armenia azerbaijan iran israel palestine and all these complex issues for example in taiwan but russell brand in my opinion he is a citizen journalist he has a big platform on social media and he is very influential in terms of influencing people's public opinion about serious geopolitical cases such as the Ukraine war because he is propagating and advancing the anti-war voices in the UK and in the United States. And secondly, in my opinion, most importantly, is the case of the COVID response and the role of the World Economic Forum in pushing draconian measures on the people and how the COVID response created many, many billionaires and how it has impoverished many, many people from the ordinary people. So he was focusing on these cases. And in my opinion, these cases are very important, especially when it comes to the Klaus Schwab gang and also the Bill Gates gang, those who are trying to increase their influence over the people's lives and over the governments through non-governmental organizations and through funding different non-governmental organizations, media outlets, buying journalists, influencing uh, politicians, like they're basically lobbyists, whether they're lobbying to change people's minds or lobbying to uh, impact and change the behavior and the policies of politicians. And so many politicians nowadays are afraid 
to to go against this trend right and especially that these people are very very influential very powerful and they own lots of journalists in their pockets so russell brand he surfed against i would say this tide and that is why he is attacked not because he committed allegedly any crimes in the past if he did in my opinion he has to go to jail and serve a maximum jail sentence this is the minimum that should happen if he did these things but back then he was one of them he was in the hollywood and he was uh, in the bbc and when they speak about these cases now they do not mention that he was one of them and if all these crimes happened it happened when he was one of them not when he left the circle and started surfing against the tide. I will show you very quick what I said in this regard, because uh, I don't want to repeat myself. Just for those who didn't uh, follow the last video, just let's watch what I said, and I will come back and I will continue my commentary on this case, uh, which I have new thoughts about. Russell Brand's uh, case. The media is accusing him of very serious uh, crimes, by the way. I have read the investigation on, I think, the Sunday Times. So the Times, the Sunday Times, and uh, another mainstream outlet, they have uh, conducted joint investigation, which all, already raises the question, the question marks, why is this organized uh, investigation? And why is this, uh, these three outlets are coming together? Because it also reminds me of the attacks of the mainstream, German mainstream media against me. When uh, the public television, ARD and the T online, they came together and they did joint investigation about me also. So just for you to know, guys, I'm a very radical person. As you can see on my YouTube channel, I'm propagating conspiracy theories. I'm the propaganda um, warrior for Assad. I'm a radical right-wing fascist person. I mean, you can go and see all my YouTube channels and all my tweets. Like I have hundreds of them on my YouTube channel. And if you can find one, just one fascistic, or right wing thing, I, I would I would give you anything you want. And that's why I always take such attacks against uh, anti establishment uh, influential people with a grain of salt. Did he commit any sort of sexual misconduct? Probably. I don't know. I wasn't there. It was 10, 15 years ago when he was he, he, he had a sexual addiction, he had a coke addiction and all this stuff. Probably. I don't know. But back then he was one of them and they didn't attack him. They didn't investigate him. And now when he left this bubble of the mainstream and he created his own empire, media empire, and he's, he's uh, surfing against the mainstream narratives in term, in, in the, uh, during the pandemic, in the Ukraine war, in J RFK, JFK, and all this stuff, right? So yeah, I think I think it's very dishonest from the media to fo to focus on this case now, and also it raises lots of questions about the legitimacy and the credibility of the uh, uh, alleged victims. I am very. I have uh, the other day my wife was asking me why are you reading so much about this case, and I, it's a very sensitive issue for me because I despise sexual misconduct and I despise any rapist. Right, the rapist for me is. Um, I, d I don't want to say what punishment do I want for the rapist because YouTube will take down my channel, but maybe you can guess, right? This is my approach for the rapists. But if I was a woman and uh, somebody raped me, I don't think that I the first thing I would do is to go to the media, and especially after 15 years. I would go to the police. And in, in terms of the laws, the regulations here, in especially in Western Europe, in the UK, you can see that the laws are very in favor of women, especially when it comes to abuse from the men's side, right? Because men are more violent than women, and they could exert tyrannical physical power against women, and women can be victims. But women can also be very vicious and can be very vicious in terms of verbal aggression and distorting somebody's image just like probably what they're doing now with uh, 
Russell Brand. I mean, there are people, the women who accused Cristiano Ronaldo of rape, Neymar of rape, and there's so many famous people who are accused of sexual misconduct. And then uh, one of them was this famous case in the Hollywood. I forgot their names now. And they were all proven to be false. So, of course, women, some women are very dishonest. Some women are very, very sneaky when it comes to such cases. And they, they're opportunistic. <laughs> I'm not accusing all women, please, you to be careful of what I'm saying. Some women are vicious, just like some men are vicious. And these vicious men, they, they resort to physical violence. And some vicious women, they resort to verbal violence. And they um, resort into character assassination, distorting the image of uh, their ex-husband or ex-boyfriend, especially when this person is rich and influential. So what do you think about this case? I am taking it with a grain of salt and I would say he is innocent until proven guilty. And some people were trying to criticize me on X, previously Twitter for saying this. I do not care about your opinion. I truly do not care because you guys, you want for Russell Brand to be criminalized for his political opinion and you wish that this woman were raped. Imagine how sick mind that you are, that you wish that all these stories turn true, and you wish that this woman were really raped instead of <laughs> of being this story being false. How sick-minded person you are to wish that this woman would have been raped, were raped in the past. I truly wish uh, for the truth to come uh, out, and the, if this woman were abused, they should go to the police, they should go to the court, and they should sue Russell Brand, and let's see if he is guilty or not. But until then, can you imagine the amount of pressure on Russell Brand if he is innocent? Because some people were say, telling me, this is not the right time to speak about this, we have to have empathy. What about having an empathy also with Russell Brand? Let's suppose, what if he is innocent and all these attacks against him are manufactured? What about you being empathetic with Russell Brand this time? Or your empathy only goes uh, in one direction. It's very hypocritical. So this is what I said about uh, the case. I want to add a few things uh, on this case because, as I mentioned, it's an important case also for myself as a person who came under an attack by the mainstream media not long time ago. And I will show you the media tactics here. The first first thing they did, they have done at least two, three years of investigation about uh, Russell Brand. They have watched hundreds of hours of his videos from the mainstream media trying to find anything that they can use against him. So first of all, the intention, right? Right. If I'm an investigator, first things first, I have to have a neutral intention toward any uh, subject or object or person, because my objective is the truth. But were these so-called investigators were interested in the truth? If they were interested in the truth, I would argue that they would have shown also the testimonies of women who spoke in favor of Russell Brand. So they have interviewed hundreds of people, including his ex-girlfriends, probably ex-wives, if he had any wives. But he was in a very uh, Hollywoody, let's say, living in a Hollywoody environment where they had all this uh, probably um, a, a lifestyle that open relationship and all this stuff. So, yeah, they met with so many people, so many women as well. And some of them, they spoke... Uh, most of them actually spoke in favor of Russell Brand, but they found four women who uh, they claim that uh, they uh, were abused by him. If these allegations are correct, I repeat, Russell Brand must rot in jail, okay? But if I bring all these women that I interviewed, and the uh, vast majority of them, probably 90% of them, said positive things about him. And then you find four women who said uh, that they were abused sexually by Russell Brand. I also want to know the intentions of this woman. And who are they? Their background. Were they... Uh, or do they have any motivation in uh, slandering the name of Russell Brand? Were they paid any money to say what they are saying nowadays? I also want to know why aren't they showing their faces to the public? And why aren't they going and reporting about these cases, their cases to the police? And a lot of people are telling me, oh, but the police doesn't do anything in this regard. I mean, in Western societies, especially in Western world, the laws are in favor of women. Probably some women were, uh, uh, they received unfair treatment, but it is 100 times better than any anywhere in, in any part of the world when it comes to such cases, right? 
And let's suppose that the maximum jail sentence for a rapist is five years. Let's suppose, right? It is way better than going and speaking to the press, which has an hideous intentions against Russell Brand and which will not serve justice for you. You want, ju- you want justice, so Russell Brand, he has to vote in jail. Probably go five years in jail, 10 years in jail. I don't know what are the sentences in the UK, but he should go to jail, right? If he committed this crime. So the tactic number one is you bring hundreds of people, you interview them, you cherry pick the people who only say bad things about him, which shows the bad intention of these so-called investigators. If they were honest about their investigation, they should have shown also the other side of the story, which is completely absent from this. The second thing that they do, they bring anonymous women and uh, they don't show their faces. And we don't know if these statements are accurate or not. They refuse to go to public. And this is a very typical British media tactic. And I will show you another uh, example of similar, let's say, accusations, not similar accusations, but similar tactic that was used against me in 2020 when Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera, Arabic broadcast in Qatar, by the way, uh, it is the baby of the BBC. The people who formed and established the Al Jazeera were former BBC employees. And this is the same school, right? The same school of manipulation, the school, the same school of brainwashing the people, the, the same school of being dishonest with the audience and showing the people something and underneath doing something else. Al Jazeera is so good in this, just pretending to be anti-imperialist and anti-establishment, and they are part of the establishment. In fact, Qatar is considered a major non-NATO ally for the United States, and they they host one of the biggest American bases in the world, and they are in the same line with the United States in so many places around the world, and including after in Syria, in Palestine, in so many places. Imagine that Qatar was the spearhead for destroying Arabic countries after the Arab Spring. Qatar was tasked by the United States to destroy the Arabic uh, uh, Arabic uh, countries. The Al Jazeera, like they poisoned the brains of the people. They destroyed the left wing in the Arabic world, just like George Soros is destroying the left wing in the uh, Western societies. They are so horrible. They are so horrible. And Al Jazeera, they published the. Uh, investigation just like they published an investigation on uh, about uh, russell brand but this time it was about me this was in 2022 and i'm not gonna uh, show you everything just one uh, minute this is in arabic but i will explain to you what they're saying so this is basically they're speaking about me this was my old studio when i first started my youtube channel and um, they say that i'm a radical right-wing person but they bring someone who is, uh, they don't show his face, they blur, uh, uh, basically, they don't show his face, they show only his body, and then they also change his voice. And this guy says that I'm receiving instructions directly from Bashar al-Assad. And I'm working here to in Germany to hunt the refugees and to... <laughs> Oh my God! To I'm here to monitor their movements and their plans so that I try to distort the image of the refugees and send them back to Syria. Look. This person is a Palestinian, by the way. Shame on him! He lives in the Netherlands and he's saying that I'm I'm an agent for Assad and I receive instructions from him. Guys, if you know any lawyer in the Netherlands who is interested in you know justice and bringing this guy into uh, court, I'm 100% ready to sue this guy. He lives in the Netherlands. He is a Syrian Palestinian guy, and he says that I receive instructions from Assad. <laughs> he says that like, I'm working on the files of the refugees. <laughs> I, I collect information about the refugees. <laughs> Uh, I want to know what are their plans, as if the refugees are just one block and I have to know their plans. I want to know the movements of the refugees. What are their plans? What are they trying to do? This guy, look. This is the same tactic that the, that the Channel 4 and the Sunday Times, they used with Russell Brand. Bring someone, don't show his face, and change his voice, and let him say anything without any... Uh, responsibility. Like, how can I sue this person? I can't even see his face. He says that I'm receiving orders from Assad. 
اوامر عم تنعطى للنسيان من خلال شفهية من خلال محمد جلبوط لانه محمد جلبوط في كل زياره له لا المانيا لازم يتبقى. So this guy says that uh, I receive instructions from Assad uh, through a third person who comes and visits Berlin and every time he comes in Berlin that he meets me. How does he, this guy know that I meet this uh, person every time he comes in Berlin? Because I post <laughs> photos on social media. Imagine that someone who is uh, working as a third, uh, uh, like a... A third man, right? He's he's bring he's giving me instructions from Assad. Uh, so I take a f- selfie with this guy and I post it on my social media accounts. How stupid I should be if I'm working for Assad or I'm a spy that I receive information and instructions from this guy and then I post a selfie with him on social media platforms. This guy, he works in the public field. He has a humanitarian uh, organization in Syria and he came to Berlin two times and I met with him in, in these two times just like I meet with many activists, journalists, whether they are from Syria or elsewhere. I meet people from the far left to the far right. I meet people in the center. I'm open to everyone who is ready to listen to my story. I, I'm not obliged to follow these lines that you cannot meet this person or meet that person because of this and that. No. I have my own brand. I have my own YouTube channel. I have my own work. I do my own thing. I do not receive instructions with anyone, but see what they do. The same thing they did with Russell Brand. They bring women, they don't show their faces, and they say whatever they want. And this guy is also the same. He's just sitting there with his big belly, probably eating all day donuts and uh, has a diabetes. And he's just talking shit about me. <laughs> It's very easy, right? It's very easy. Now, if I want to sue this guy, how can I sue him? They hide his face. And about Al Jazeera, if they are honest with this investigation, just like the case of Russell Brand, why didn't they call me? This so-called investigator, he came in to Berlin. And he just walked in the streets taking some videos of him, like James Bond walking in the streets. Instead of doing this photo shooting, let him call me. Let's sit and talk. Let's see if I'm the person that they are speaking about. Why don't they do that? Because all their propaganda and all their lies will be broken down. They, it will shatter. They cannot sustain. They cannot sit face to face, live interview with me and win. There is no way because they're liars and they know they're liars. That's why they didn't call me. Anyways, this is the second tactic. The first one, as I mentioned, interview some don't show faces and so just make some allegations against Russell Brand. Again, if Russell Brand is guilty, he should rot in jail. Put this aside, okay? Every time I don't want to mean, I don't want to repeat myself all the time. But why why Russell Brand is more dangerous than other cases? They came also after Andrew Tate, right, and other Alex Jones and all these people. Uh, first of all, Russell Brand is not Alex Jones. Russell Brand is not uh, Andrew Tate. He's not a populist person. He comes from the left. This is very dangerous for the establishment because they're trying their best to destroy the left, the real left, the anti-imperialist left. And they're making the left come become uh, these brainless, radical, radicalized ideologues who are who say women are men, men are women, and we have to change the gender of the kids and all this stuff, right? They change the entire discourse of the left wing into these BS things. So Russell Brand comes from the left. He's, he's an anti-war. He's speaking to truth about the Ukraine war. He's speaking to truth about the uh, pharmaceutical industries and the billionaires and the greed that uh, is driving this uh, COVID response and the role of the WF, the role of Bill Gates and all these things. Secondly, Uh, why Russell Brand is uh, dangerous? Because he is a left wing and not a right wing. When he's a, it's very easy by the establishment media to dismiss and discredit a right wing person like Andrew Tate, like Alex Jones. Very easy. Just call him a right wing, it's done. But they can't do the same with Russell Brand. Russell Brand is, a, I believe, he's a libertarian, right? And he's just like Joe Rogan, and he's for the homosexual rights. He comes from the left. He's uh, more or less a socialist person. They cannot call him a right wing. So this is the danger because they're trying to destroy the left. And there is someone coming from the left. He's speaking the truth about so many things, especially when it comes to imperialism, when it comes to the greed of the establishment, and when it comes to the pharmaceutical industries. That's why Russell Brand is more 
is more dangerous than other personalities. But there are also so many cases, and uh, why I am I'm suspicious, because this could be just a slandering against Russell Brand for all this context that I gave you. And there are so many cases before him. For example, Julian Assange, he was accused of rape and sexual misconduct, and then the charges were dropped because of uh, lack of evidence. Then I remember Ronaldo and Neymar, those famous football players, they were also accused of rape. And one of, one of, in one of the cases, in Neymar's case, Neymar was so clever that he had a camera in his room and he recorded how he himself was abused by a woman physically, and he was trying to defend himself. So the charges were dropped on Ronaldo and Neymar. And recently there was a French, I think, African player who was also charged. And uh, for two years, he stopped playing football up until the court decided that there is no evidence. His entire uh, future was destroyed because of a lie. These cases happen. Such cases happen. And there are so many women out there trying to hunt such rich men just for fame and money. I don't know the percentage, but there are so many women who would do that, right? Because uh, they have the motivation, they have a financial motivation, and they have a fame motivation. So, yeah, if you pick 100 women, and if we say that around 5% of the society are psychopaths, and then of 100 uh, women, there are five of them are psychopaths. If you bring 200 women, 10 of them are psychopaths. So probably they they just picked the psychopaths uh, from these people. The same thing applies on men, right? I'm not uh, <laughs> giving them carte blanche. Uh, there's the case of Kevin Spacey was cleared of sex offenses recently. And there is the case of Johnny Depp who won the defamation lawsuit against his ex-wife who said so many outrageous things during the court, including sexual abuse and physical abuse and all these things turned out to be false. So yes, there are so many cases that turned out to be false. So I'm, I, yeah, I'm going to take all these things with a grain of salt until I see the evidence, the concrete evidence. And I know that the, the press is so dishonest. And when all these mainstream media outlets come together against one person, I know there is something fishy. And personally, I smell corruption when I see it. And when I see an organized attack by the, all the mainstream media outlets, and there is a repetition of the same thing over and over again now in the, since two or three days and in the coming days, I know there is something fishy about it. When all the press unites against one person, then you have to be suspicious. And especially when it's coming from so-called journalist investigators who are part of the establishment, who are pushing for all the things that Russell Brand was fighting against, such as mandates, the WF, the vaccines, and all this stuff. So, And uh, if you check the background of these investigators, they are the usual suspects unfortunately so what do you think guys do you trust the allegations against russell brand do you think he's innocent do you think he's guilty do you think maybe back then he had a different lifestyle and he has committed some probably uh, crimes or it's just a dishonest campaign against him um i'm personally more convinced that this is a hit piece against him uh, until I see the uh, evidence, until I see Russell Brand in court. But up until then, they are trying to destroy the life of a person who changed in the past few years and he has become the be best version of himself and he's giving a service to humanity by waking up people and enlightening brains, which is a very brave thing to do. He is a multimillionaire. He could have just uh, lived his life doing some business here and there and continue his life. But he decided to put his face um, on media again. He created his uh, media empire and he put his uh, reputation at risk. And I believe that's why we have to speak about this case and not to believe everything that they say in this regard Um without questioning it. I will, before we finish this uh, video, I will just show you last video, which was uh, published by one of the women that wa uh, she was uh, interviewed by uh, the press to, take, to get her testimony because she was one of the ex-girlfriends of Russell Brand and she refutes all the allegations and she says that he, she gave a very good, uh, she gave a positive feedback about Russell Brand, but they didn't mention her name nor they mentioned um, her. I actually know who this is about. 
and I have the receipts. I was contacted in June by a journalist uh, regarding a video I made uh, about a certain celebrity and a weekend that we shared together. The video is kind of viral. Uh, it's on my page somewhere if you want to go see it. And that certain somebody was, as most of you will be aware, Mr. Brand. They weren't going to use my story because it didn't fit the narrative for their documentary because he wasn't an asshole to me. <laughs> But here are some of the messages. Obviously, I will take out the person's name and stuff. We had a phone call. She contacted me for more information and I didn't contact her back because I kind of felt like it would be mean. Anyway, there you go. Put your bets on. It's a documentary about the one and only Mr. Russell Brand. Uh, and just a fun fact. Astrology wise, the lunar nodes of destiny have shifted into Aries right on top of his Mars and Moon. Written in the stars, baby. Okay, bye. So as you can see, she's uh, one of the ex-girlfriends of Russell Brand, and she comes out on Twitter and other social media platforms to say that she was contacted by the investigators and her statement wasn't included in this uh, investigation and documentary. So ask yourself, why and why did they cherry pick the statements? Anyways, I've been your host, Kirk Almasian of Syriana Analysis. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. If you want to support my independent work and if you want to support me to get to upgrade my, uh, let's say, the tools and the softwares, please consider subscribing, become a patron. There are so many means in the description below. John, I've not known you long, but mm. I love you already. But I have to say that it's, <laughs> it's disingenuous to claim that the biases that are exhibited on Fox News are any different from the biases exhibited on MSNBC. It's difficult to suggest that's, that's... that these corporations operate as anything other than mouthpieces for their affiliate owners in BlackRock and Vanguard. And, and unless we start to embrace, and, and also, mate, like just spiritually, if I may use that word in your great country, we have to take responsibility <laughs> for our own perspective. I, I've been on that MSNBC, yeah, mate. It was right. propagandist nutcrackery yeah. you're, you're on there. Not, I went on a show called Morning Joe. Yeah. It was absurd the way they carried Good on. Good morning, Joe. Yes, yeah, it, I don't it. know what it was. It wasn't morning. There was no one called Joe there. No one could concentrate. They didn't understand the basic tenets of journalism. No one was willing to stick up for genuine American heroes uh, like Edward Snowden. No one was willing to talk about Julian Assange and what he suffered trying to bring real journalism to the American people and I think to sit within the castle of MSNBC throwing rocks oh. at Fox News is ludicrous. My friend, make my MSNBC friend. better. My friend, my make friend, MSNBC my friend, great my friend, again. My friend, I would love. I would. The moment the moment. Why them on a territory right. you can win on, Joe? Well, Russell, Russell, darling, um, the moment that you give me a specific example. An actual example. Okay, I'll give you oh, one. Right, just wait, just wait, 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 that we know that the election wasn't stolen You've or something this equivalent, example. but I will go. I but I will go out. But I will go out on television and say the okay. opposite. I will lie. When's I'll, my answer? We, we give, just give me a give me the specific example. I understand the basic okay. part. Give me a specific I, 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 example. I, 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 all right, all right. I'm with you. I think it's a false equivalency, Russell. It's a no, it's I, not. I, That's I, your I, own bias. It's, a false but, it's, a, it's not I, about bias. It's a false equivalency because you don't <clears> actually know anything about any of these organizations you're talking about. Even on MSNBC once. Big fucking deal. My darling, you, it was more than enough. With, you can't come it up with such a carry You don't have a single, you have a single actual no. fact. Do you want an example? Do yeah, you yes. want an example? Yes. The ludicrous, outrageous criticisms of Joe Rogan around ivermectin, re deliberately referring to it as a horse non, medicine when they know it's an effective non medicine. Yeah, that, that's what not a bad Rachel example. Maddow turning up on the TV non saying, if you take well, this vaccine, you're not going to get it when it hadn't been clinically trialed for transition. You have to listen. Wait, Do you think you can improve response. America I by determinedly be and avowedly condemning Fox News without acknowledging that you're participating in the same game? I'm Did you not? Not just listen to Bernie Sanders, <laughs> someone who plainly, legitimately believes in this country and believes it's possible to change, but is bound by corruption, is bound.
bound by the lobbying system. Surely it's clear to you, Bill, as one of the great pundits and experts and comic voices, that systemic change is required. Money has to be taken out of politics. We need new political systems that genuinely represent ordinary Americans so that we can overcome cultural differences. And bickering about which propagandist network is the worst is not going to save a single American life, not improve the life of a single American child, not going to improve America's standing in the world, and the world needs a strong America. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. So you have an obligation, a duty, not to condemn these people.